Today I will paint this beautiful leaf in only one color, which means monochrome. It's a little bit complicated, but I will show you how to simplify this process by dividing it into three steps. First I wet the silk, but not too much, because we need a slightly damp silk. And I even dry it a little with a paper towel. In the first stage of painting, it's very important for us to decide where we have the lightest areas and where we have the darkest ones. And so, in this first step, we will lightly outline the general big spots of light and dark. And I try to leave the lightest areas and highlights as light as possible, while leaving the darkest areas also quite light, that is, in the medium tones, because in the next stages of more detailed description of them, I will darken them. I have chosen this leaf not because it has some particularly interesting form, but because it's expressively volumetric. And yes, I keep talking about volume in silk painting, and about the fact that silk painting can be treated not only as a decorative art, but also as a fine art. But why monochrome, you might ask? Because painting with just one color will help us to concentrate on finding the relationship between light and dark. And an easier tutorial on this subject, and at the same time explaining the basic principle of volume distribution on objects, was a few videos ago. And this is where the reflex is, so I leave this edge a bit lighter. That is the first stage without much details, just large patches of light and dark. And in the second stage I already start to build up the value of color, and very carefully and attentively work out the details. My only paint today is silk dye, which must be steamed. I use a synthetic round brush. As always, a plain white plate is my palette. And as you have already seen, I always keep porous paper handy to dry the brush. The paint I chose is dark enough, so there is an opportunity to find as many gradations between its darkest value and its lightest. There are a million shades in halftones, and you can only find them by using a palette. At this step, I look very carefully at the reference and compare each small area in terms of degree of value with the neighboring area. And I bravely build up the darker shades and still try to leave the highlights quite light. It makes my leaf look too convex and even a bit surreal. As you see, my brush is very often half dry and I wipe it in a paper tissue even when there is already paint on it.
in order not to get confused in the drawing, and accuracy is very important here, the drawing must be well drawn. I guess not all of you know how to draw. So, especially for you, I made a video on how to draw on the grid. I hope it would be helpful. In the second step, you can get carried away with the details. Get lost in them and lose the basic relationship of light and dark. And that's what usually happens to me. But I promise you that in the third stage, this is usually corrected quite easily. In fact, in this kind of painting, it's critical to control the degree of wetness of the brush and very often I need it almost dry. As you probably already know, I love working on colored silk, and this leaf would be great on any colored silk, not just white. And the third step. In this, in some places, I soften the contrast, smooth out the transitions hide the highlights where they are not needed. I do this mostly with a flat laid brush, and that was the only brush I use today. I would like to see your reaction to this video, and thanks to all of you who have already done it. Sometimes it's very useful to turn the image, to look from a different angle, and then you can better see the mistakes, and I take away the contrast again. Before the silk dries, the paint can flow, and not let this to happen, I use a hair dryer.